Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today in this informative session of the WIT program. Uh, this session is going to be recorded, and as I have said, and it will be available at the website. So uh, if you have any friend or whatever, whenever that can be interested in the program, uh, it will be uploaded. Uh, the session will last about five, uh, 45, uh, 50 minutes. Uh, firstly, we are going to introduce ourselves. Uh, he's uh, my workmate, uh, Carlos Martirena. Uh, she's uh, Marta Eknevi, and I am Ainoa, and we are the program programs managers. Uh, in this session, we would like to help you with all the questions that you can have about this second call and about the application system. Uh, the structure of this meeting will be like this. A small introduction about WIT. After, we, we will have a look to the most frequently asked question that we have already got by email from some of you. Later, my workmate Carlos will do an application form and he will clarify some of the mistakes we have already detected in the application that we have received. And finally, you will have time to ask questions uh, through the chat or in voice, wherever you desire. So, first of all, uh, we would like to share the screen and we will see with programs video. Okay. So, Hi there, we'd like to introduce you to WIT, a highly competitive, merit-based international fellowship program for early stage researchers from all over the world. WIT is looking for 16 talented researchers who want to develop their innovative doctoral thesis projects in Navarre, Spain, in the framework of an attractive RDI regional system. Co-financed by the co-founder program, it is part of the Marie Skudowska Curie actions under the European Union's Horizon 2020 program. Thanks to WIT, you'll get to do your doctoral thesis during a three-year stay on one of these areas included in the Smart Specialization Strategy of Navarre, Health, Automotive Mechatronics and Advanced Manufacturing and Energy with Artificial Intelligence as a fourth cross-sectional area. You will undertake a freely selected cutting-edge doctoral project at one of the excellent research groups of the two Navarrese universities, Public University of Navarre and University of Navarre, both with extensive experience in internationalization and network creation combining talent attraction, research, and innovation. Additionally, the involvement of international universities, research and technological centers, and industrial organizations, all of them with a strong expertise on weak areas, will guarantee an attractive cross-sectoral ecosystem for incoming researchers like you. WIT is giving you the chance to continue learning in a region, Navarre, renowned for its higher education system, and a national leader in talent attraction and retention. The time has come to show off your talent. Are you ready? WIT, welcoming international talent. Uh, well, as you have seen now, WIT is an H2020 program for early stage researches, co-funded by the European Union and the government of Navarre, Spain. WIT program has two calls. The first one that we are finishing right now with eight fellowships. Eight people are coming to Navarra in the next month. And the second call that we are running now with another eight fellowships. The fellows who finally come to Navarra, to Navarra will sign a 36 months contract that will enable them to do their project of PhD, the doctoral program and the thesis in one of the two universities of Navarre, the Public University of Navarre, UGNA, and the University of Navarre, UNAV. Both universities are located in Pamplona, the capital city of Navarre, 
and both of them have a large experience in talent attraction and retention. Besides, almost 30 academic and industrial partners organizations of WIT will offer secondment, short stays, and training focuses on WIT areas. As you already know, the WIT program has four research areas, health, automotive, mechatronics, and advanced manufacture, energy, and an artificial intelligence applied to the previous ones. You can see it here, maybe. As we will see later, each area has different lines of research in which 58 excellent research groups from both universities take part. All candidates are free to choose one of them for developing his or her PhD project. Now let's have a look to the most frequently asked question. And this document is on the website also, so in case that you have any question, you can always go over there and have a look. This is the last our first call video, the, the session that uh, we made last year, we will put here this one. Sorry, no, this one. Okay. It's a problem. Oh, sorry. No. Where is? No. And the document that we are going to read now you you have it here okay so uh, the questions are into um like in two parts of the document the first one is the with programs call in general and there after there is an uh, questions about application systems so the first question how many positions are funded with program offers eight funded positions as we have seen before in the four research areas. Is there an age limit to apply for the positions? No, only the years of research experience will be considered, not the physical age of the candidates. Can I apply for a position if I'm, I am in my final year of studies in a country outside the European higher education area? Yes, if you are studying in a university not adapted to the European higher education area, you must have completed a degree that gives you access to doctoral studies by 18th March 2023, provided that you are eligible for a doctoral program in the country where your university is located. I already have a doctoral degree. Can I apply for the fellowship for a second doctoral degree? No, this call is for early stage researchers who are between the first and the fourth years of their research career and have not been awarded a doctoral degree. I had been graduated in my master's degree before 18th March 2019, but I have had a child after graduation. Will I comply with the requirement of early stage researcher? Yes, you can justify a career break because of maternity or paternity leave. Also, you can justify, justify any period of inactivity in research because of different reasons. As we have seen, maternity or paternity leave, illness, compulsory national services, time working in the in the industry or other sectors. Of course, you must give details about the activities undertaken during the period of the career break in the application form and attach the documents to prove it. We will come over, over this question uh, soon with Carlos. I have two master degree. I have obtained the first one of them before 18 March 2019 and the second after that date. Can I apply justifying to be an early stage researcher using the second master degree? No, you cannot use the second master degree. 
the date that counts for which program is the date when you have been graduated in the first of the master's degrees. I am currently enrolled in a doctoral program, but I have not defended my PhD. Can I apply? Yes, provided that you have not been awarded in a doctoral degree, you can apply. I would like to apply, it, but I will only have my diploma master at the end of March 2023. Can I apply by sending the bachelor diploma and the certificate of achievement of the first year of master? Unfortunately, you will not be able to attend this call, the second call, since all the requirements must be fulfilled and accredited before the deadline of the call. For this second call will be the 18th of March, 2023. I completed my master last month. Does that qualify me as an ESR or do I have to be enrolled for a doctoral de doctorate degree first? Yes, you are an ESR and it's not necessary to be enrolled in a doctoral program. Therefore, in case of obtaining the WIT Fellowship, you will have to enroll in the doctoral program of the Navarrese University of your choice. Could I choose, cho choose more than one research group? This is important. <laughs> no, you can only choose one research group. If approved, can I change the research group at the time of signing the contract? No, you cannot. You must stay in the same group you chose at the beginning of the selection process. What proof of extension document for English language matter must I provide if I completed my master's degree from a university in the UK where the language of instructions was English? In this case, the exemption document will be the master's degree or academic record in which it can be seen that it corresponds to an UK university. And the last one of the general questions. I know English, but I don't have any certificate. I could prove it at the time of the interview. Can I apply for a scholarship? No, you should prove your level of English by the way the call says before the deadline. This is the 18th of March. First, presenting an official certificate or being native from an English language country or the last one, having completed undergraduate studies for a minimum three years or postgraduate studies, bachelor's or master degree for minimum two years in English in a country other than their country of origin. And of course, documentary justification must be provided. And the last question that we have choose, chosen is once. I have chosen, well, I, we will come over this first one uh, with Carlos when uh, he's going to make the application form. But because it will be easier to understand the, the things that we are saying in, in that point. The second one, can I send my CV in free format? No, you might use the template designed for this purpose, which can, can be found it at the WIT at the WIT website. Can I send my expression of interest in free format? No, again, you must use the template design that you can find in the website. Can I send the documents all or part of it by postal mail or by email? No, documents can only be submitted electronically through the applicant's portal, portal at WIT website and always in PD format. And the last one, is it possible to submit documents after the call deadline? Uh, of course, it's not possible. And uh, after the provisional list of application, uh, that has been admitted, excluded, and in need of rectification uh, are published, then uh, some of the documents, document, document, documents sorry, can be sent. But after the call, de uh, call deadline, is not possible. So 
Now we are going to come back to the website. And we are going to have a look to some of the things that I have already said. Uh, in this, here we you can see the template that you need uh, to send this CV and the expression of if interest template. And here you have the document that is called Guide for Applicants with all the explanations about the call and the question that you can have. And then now we are going to make so. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Carlos Martirena and uh, as I'm as my colleague I know has said previously, we want to use this informative session to try to clarify some questions of the call that seem not to be too clear in light of the first proposal received. Uh, to try not to forget any of those issues, later I will try to create a proposal step by step and to clarify point by point the different issues that might arise. But before that, I would like to give you some general advice that I consider important to take into account before starting to fill in the application template. The first advice is technical. It is necessary to take into account that, unfortunately, our application does not save the data entered. So it's necessary to fully fill the template before sending it. It cannot be left without sending a document thinking that you will attack it later, since in that case it would be necessary to make a new request and enter all the data again. So it would be very convenient that before starting to fill your application, read very carefully the guide of applicants, as said Ainoa, and prepare your computer with a folder with all the documents you will need to attack later. The second thing is important. You must bear in mind that if you are selected at WIT, you will not only have to carry out a specific investigation, a doctoral thesis, but you will also have to take a doctoral program. And as WIT program is designed, both things are related. They are not independent. <clears throat> That is why my advice is that before starting to fill in the template, take the necessary time to properly choose, first of all, the subline or research group in which you would like to carry out the research. And once that uh, line or group is chosen, in the corresponding file to that subline or research group, carefully read the doctoral program that you will have to take for it. We have detected in many cases that the chosen doctoral program is not the one established in the chosen research subline. And even in many cases, that even the chosen doctoral program is from a different university than, than that of the chosen research group. Uh, regarding the choice of the subline or research group, there is one more thing that I would like to highlight. As you know, WIT has four areas, or rather three specific areas, with the fourth area, the artificial intelligence transversal to all of them. So, for example, if your area is advanced manufacture, health, or even energy, before choosing a certain subline or group in that area, also check that there isn't a group in the intelligent artificial area that you might even fit into best. And uh, after that uh, considerations, I'm going to try to fulfill a, an application form. As you say, as you can see, the first uh, register that you have to fill 
are the um, personal information registers, the name, the surname. So, well, that's true. I'm going to make uh, with my real dates. <coughs> <laughs> Gender. And the passport, num passport number is is just um, is not exactly necessary, as you can say. This is not the the red point market. But uh, is just to study clinical effects. I'm not going to fulfill all of this. And after that, There are some fields that describe just personal circumstances, like family obligations, having a disability, or any other that uh, applicants must declare for different reasons. After that, we define two very important fields because they are, they are related with the fulfillment of requirements to be able to opt for the call, which are fundamentally three. The mobility rule, the condition of being an early stage researcher, and the English level. Um, for those fields, some questions are, are made. As you can see, for the mobility self check, you have to say if you have lived, worked, or studied in Spain in the last three years. And if you say yes, you will have to indicate how many months. It's just to, to in a simple look, we can check if you fulfill the, the mobility rule of this program. In case you, you mark in this field, more than the 12 months of the limit, still you can fulfill the requirements, but it would be necessary that you apport the documents that you have uh, made a career break during this period. It would be exactly in the second in the second field. In this one, when you indicate what was your the date of that you obtained the the grade of the studies that access that uh, give you access to the doctorate. If you say yes, it's a uh, we understand that you fulfill this requirement, but if you say no, you will have here to justify that you have made a career break or any other circumstances that permit you to opt to this call. All of these uh, questions that you declare in these fields have to be supported with the corresponding documents that you that you will attack later. But I I will remark this question later. Um, after those fields that uh, implicate the fulfillment of requirements, you have uh, another fields about your education. You have to apport the dates of the bachelor degree, the university, the start date, and the final date, or what you obtain that grade. 
and the same with the master degree. Uh, there are some uh, exceptions or special cases that uh, for some studies, for instance, in, in Spain or in, in Europe, there are some uh, studies that are long period studies, for instance, uh, medicine, that uh, with just uh, coursing or having this grade, the grade of medicine, you can uh, embark in a doctoral program. It's not necessary to have a master degree. Those, uh, those cases can be similar in, in other countries. For instance, in the first call, we have detected that in, in Cuba, uh, it happened something similar. And um, we, we understand that in, in Iran, it can happen something similar with other studies, with uh, like chemistry or, or some of them. In any case, uh, in that case, if that is the case, uh, please uh, fulfill those, um, repeat this, uh, the grade of medicine, in, in that case, just as bachelor degree and just a master degree. We will understand that uh, this is the circumstances. Don't, uh, don't, as you say, it's necessary to, to fulfill the, this field even when it's not really a, a master. Um, following with the education data, there is the, the third of the fields that uh, implicates a uh, fulfillment of requirements. In this case, it would be the English level requirement. Um, the general way of, of uh, fulfillment of this requirement is supporting the, the correspondence certificate. It has to be one of them. It's not uh, valid that uh, a certificate from a uh, university of uh, any country that uh, accredits that you have a very good level of English. No, it has to be one of those uh, official certificates. And as I said before, for the mobility rule and the earliest of, and the, being an early stage researcher, after you mark this uh, this point, you will have to uh, attack the corresponding uh, documents that accreditates it. Um, the following field would be the one. Uh, about the, um, the doctoral program and the, the research line that you have uh, chosen. Um, for uh, fulfill these uh, fields, uh, it's uh, convenient, as I told you before, that you have a look at it very carefully with the, the, the research field that you choose. For instance, I mean, okay. uh, imagine that you choose this, uh, the 1B1 uh, subline, open that file and important uh, you notice that it belongs that it's a research group from the public university of navarra and the doctoral program that you will have to attend is the doctorate in communication technology bioengineering and renewable energy So, in the form, you will have to to choose 
the mechatronic automotive and mechatronic and advanced manufacturing area. The research group is 1B1. The university is UGNA. And the doctoral program is this one, the Doctorate in Communication, Technology and Bioengineering. Please uh, be careful with that question. In last, the first call of, the, of WIT last year, there were many, many, many confusions in, in these fields. Someone uh, choose this, this group and after select the, uh, even the, the other university and uh, the doctoral program for this year, we have improved this question because uh, at least uh, when you choose the, the university, it only gives you the chance to choose one doctoral program from that university. But, but for that reason, be careful at least that choose correctly the university. Uh, here it would be just um, you can uh, apport as, uh, up to two recommendation letters. So here you will have just to to point the the contact dates of the of the reference of the the person that signs that uh, recommendation letter. Just the references. Uh, again, you will have to attack the letters itself in this in this place. Uh, after that, you just uh, mark these this boxes that as a, as a administrative uh, requirements of the of the fellowship program and uh, another thing that is a, they are formal things but uh, it's important to take in account as uh, I know I said before uh, for the for some of the documents especially the the curriculum vitae and the uh, expression of interest, there are two official templates that you have to, to use. You can't uh, afford a, a curriculum vitae in the way, in a free format. It has to, if you afford in a free format, probably we will not reject your, your proposal, but uh, it will be, um, Probably it will get a, a poor uh, evaluation for the from the evaluator. Um, and another thing, a formal thing too, um, all the documents, the obligatory documents that you have to apport, as you say, with you can see here with this uh, red point, uh, has to be in a special uh, name. For instance, the document that uh, of your um, bachelor studies is named TIT1. Is the document called that we have called TIT1, the title one. The document that uh, with the data is about your master degree, you, we have called it uh, the T2, Title 2 document. The documents related with the compliance of the mobility rule are named MR, mobility rule document. And so English level, curriculum vitae, 
expression of interest, recommendation letter one, recommendation letter two, and merits, merits, and other personal uh, circumstances. And uh, in your um, when you complement this uh, form, you, we, you have to attack the document, the title one document, for instance, uh, your name is uh, Mohamed Sarid, you will have to apport this document about your degree, bachelor degree, that would be Mohamed Sarid, Tit one. Uh, the mobility rule, Mohamed Sarid, mobility rule MR document. Uh, Mohamed Sarid, English level, document, EL. That would be the correct uh, name of, of the archives that you have to afford. Please uh, try to follow this rule because it's very it's much easier for us to to organize your uh, your appliance if you don't follow this rule as i said before probably you you don't be rejected but uh, your documents can be can suffer and can be can have some trouble when we organize them and miss uh, one of them can be missed. And as I, as I said before, in, in your evaluation or your, we can lose this document and, and, and think that you have not uh, apported it uh, in, in time. And that would be the, the general things I would like to highlight. And I don't know if you have uh, any specific question or you have made it uh, before in the chat or you can make it, uh, make it now. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello, madam. Uh, good afternoon. Are you able to hear me? Sorry, hello. we can. can uh, we am I you? audible? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, madam. I have two, three questions. Actually, I have already made my application. I have submitted my application. So the thing is that I was not aware of CV and uh, uh, expression of interest format. So I have just made it in plain format and I have already uploaded the documents and even about naming the documents like my name and then tit one, tit two that I have not done. I have already submitted the application uh, and before submitting I had emailed also because in website actually uh, there was some com confusion in the field of energy. So I had emailed also and I got a reply. So when I checked again the error was corrected. So, madam, I thought that uh, now it's done so we can apply. In that case, I've already applied and I have even submitted the documents, but like CV and EOI are not in the template form. Like I have made it my own. So in this case, uh, can the corrections be made or uh, I should make a new application? Well, um, if there are some many things that you would like to change, uh, you can make a, a, a complete a new application. Okay, sir, but with the we, same email ID, if a new application will go, then it, will it be a problem? Because, uh, like, uh, uh, like the change, I have to make changes like the name of the documents in the name of the documents. Uh, for my CV, I have to make in the template and UI. So, will it going? To, uh, will it create a problem or, a, like? I, um, as I told you before, if it's just a, a very specific problem, 
um, you can make it uh, by email, preferring that uh, you would like that uh, to change some concrete uh, document in your proposal. We, we would make it uh, ourselves. But if there are many things, for instance, if you can um, you can uh, you can change all the documents before you didn't follow exactly the rule of uh, the name and the documents. You can make uh, a total new proposal. And yes, so uh, I can either mail you with the changes or I can make a fresh application as per the requirements. Hello? Yeah, well, I, I, um, you have to validate it. Uh, it would be no problem if you uh, make both things, but please, uh, with any decision, uh, communicate to us for email. Because okay. if, if, if it's not the case, we can see the two, two different uh, applications and maybe uh, we disregard we disregard the one that you have to consider it as last and correct proposal. Okay, if, for instance, uh, at, the, at the moment we have uh, more or less uh, forty nine proposals. Uh, really, they are forty three because there is one that is uh, charged twice, maybe because one of these things, and there are another uh, person that has made like four or five uh, proposals with different areas, and that will be really a problem <coughs> because uh, just uh, one of proposal from one, from one research area can be made. But, uh, in the other cases, as I told you, that there are a person that has made two proposals, probably just uh, aporting a document uh, he forgot or, or changing, um, improving the proposal. Just uh, um, in this case, please send us uh, an email advertising that uh, you have made to proposal, but the second one is is the valid one. Okay, sir, thanks. And one last question, sir. Actually, in website, when we are selecting the lines, uh, like I am interested under the energy uh, 3C2, that circular energy question uh, one. But uh, when we are going to the website, the uh, and we are clicking in the column where line and all is shown, it is the uh, line name is showing as line name for 3C1. It is not showing for 3C2. But while filling my application form, I was interested for energy 3C2. Uh, again, the same thing. If I am, if I understand your question, uh, you have you can you want to change the the sublime. No, sir. Actually, uh, in your website of WIT, when we are going into the column of research lines, there is uh, four options, automotive, health, energy, and artificial intelligence. Yes. In energy, when we are clicking the drop down in 3C part, will it uh, valorization of natural resources and waste? Under that, uh, there are three portions, 3C1, 3C2, 3C3. Uh, so in that, when we are clicking, uh, uh, when we are clicking the 3C2, there is one PDF opening. So in that PDFs page number one, uh, it is written. Uh, it is showing university name area. So in WIT programs research line name, it is written valorization of natural resources and waste. Uh, so I am uh, just asking you that when we were when I was filling my application program and when I was selecting the research line or research group in my application form, 
I selected 3C2 Circular Strategy of Fertilization, that program. But according to this document on WIT website, it is showing that we have to select WIT program's research line name as Valorization of Natural Resources and Waste. Mm -hmm. So that is a confusion because right now, like for this topic, the WIT program's research line name in application is showing as valorization of natural resources but in actual application form when we are selecting the drop down for research line it is showing 3c1 3c2 3a1 like this so that is the confusion sir because i have already filled the form and right now when i have checked on this website uh, in the guidelines it is showing uh, research line name as completely different Maybe it's yes. Um, if there is a mistake with the application form, we will just have a look now and and we will correct it. Yes, sir, madam, that is only the confusion because uh, right now I checked it. So when we are going to that PDF from your website for 3C2, that Microsoft Word document, not sorry, not PDF, a Microsoft Word WIT proposal JM Garcia Mina, that document is opening. So in that university name is there, WIT area, energy is selected. The third part, WIT's program, research nine name, in that name is different. And for the same program, madam, when we are going in the application form and we are selecting WIT area, energy, then we are selecting research line, no such name is written, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so we will take it and, and we will send you an, an email. Okay, yeah, of course, we will correct it in case that we have to. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I'm sorry for that. No, no issues, ma'am. <laughs> so, please, more questions? Hello. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, so, so I have a question. I, um, I'm still studying in Poland. I'm an international student here in Poland. And I'll be finished, I'll be, I'll be, my defense will be around February. But I'm not sure if I'll get my certificate yet. But I can get my certificate um, around March, but I'm not sure if it will be the deadline. Can I still apply? But I can get an alternative to the certificate to my master's here in the university. <laughs> well, um, um, we we'll have to 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 check that document if the, if the documents you you send uh, accredits that uh, you finish your studies in 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 date um, you could be accepted but uh, uh, it has to be clear that you have uh, passed the the last proof that uh, that gives you that can be considered that your studies are finished, even when the official title could be could be signed later. But uh, it will it will depend of, of of which kind of document you you aboard. Anyway, you I will encourage you to make the to send the the proposal and. The commission, in case, will will decide if you are uh, accepted or, or rejected. Okay, thank you. I, I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, part of my family have been in Spain, Victoria Gastel, for a while now. And I do visit Spain, but I've never lived in Spain for up to three months. But I have my NIE. Can I still apply? Am I qualified? Because I don't really know about the mobility rule. I don't know if it is against the rule. 
Well, uh, the mobility rules uh, uh, is if you have studied or uh, made in your uh, taking your your principal activity in Spain for the, not not that if you have been in Spain um, by holidays or visiting a, a, fam a familiar or anything. Okay, thank you. So, can, Mel I, can I say something about this, Carlos? Yes. She said that she has her NIE. So that means that he has a legal residence in Spain. So that may be a problem. Uh, so the question is, how long have you been having that NIE and having the legal residence in Spain? Since June last year. So I think, and please correct me, Carlos and Ainoa and Marta, that you may qualify for submission of a proposal as long as you haven't been more than 12 months in Spain. But mm -hmm. what Carlos says, I mean, the, the problem is that the, the NIE means that you have legal residence in Spain, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So sorry, my last, can I ask my last question? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, all my experience, I have it in, in, the, in the laboratory, but can I apply um, for artificial intelligence? Well, I saw so many interested because I would love to try. Uh, well, uh, here in Josu, Josu is uh, the manager, it belongs to the management team of the program but uh, he belongs to the public university of of navarra so in for some answers he's uh, he could uh, answer you even better than us but um, so i i didn't understand the question so you mean that you've been working in 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 lab and you you want to try yeah. To the new things, right? I mean, as far as you fulfill the requirements of that position, uh, you can. I, I mean, I, I, I think you 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 are eligible for 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 applying to that position. And but then, I don't know. I mean, then uh, you will have to enter into the process, and uh, the the selection, the assessments uh, will be done and and you'll be you'll be chosen or, or not what i mean is that as yeah. far as you fulfill the legal requirements for applying and um, mm -hmm. you, you can apply for any position you you want yes. uh, uh, other question uh, you can freely uh, apply for any any of the areas you you think but um, you have to take into account just uh, two things that normally aren't uh, aren't definitive, but uh, you have to explore. First of all, is that uh, as I said before in my presentation, you have to if you are selected, you have to to make an, an investigation, a doctoral thesis, but you have to embark in a doctoral program too. So maybe, maybe uh, it's just a thing that you have to think. Uh, your um, the doctoral programs in in that university, in some cases, uh, specify which are the the titles or the the previous uh, knowledges that are required to embark in that doctoral program. So normally it's not uh, with, with your, if it's all logical that you have the studies that, that uh, permits you embark in that doctoral program. And the other thing that you can uh, have into account, and in fact, uh, in the, in the, um, page that contains the information of the research group, it's, um, it's given an orientation about the uh, formation they, will, they would like 
that uh, applicants have to embark to to join that uh, doctor, um, research group. So um, there there are some um, titles that fit better with that uh, with that research group than others, and that could. Uh, could make that the, your um, the score in the evaluation is better or not. Okay. But made those two advertisements, um, you can freely choose the the research area you you prefer. Carlos, can Thank I say so something? Adding to your explanation, um, in each. Uh, each uh, document explaining the research line or topics, you will find at the end of those documents um, uh, a point named candidate requisites. Uh, and in those um, documents, you will find the degree that is needed or required for each line. So uh, the, please check if you're interested in any artificial intelligence line, Go to the document explaining that those lines and the content of those lines, those lines, and at the end of the document, you will find what degree you must have or is required to apply to each of the lines. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Hi, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, well, uh, I'm from Iran and uh, unfortunately, uh, recently there has been some regulations that uh, recent graduates uh, cannot uh, obtain their uh, official degree, master degrees, unless they find uh, a position, uh, a PhD uh, position abroad, or they enroll in Iranian uh, university for PhD studies. So my problem is that I have already completed my master degrees, uh, but I cannot provide my official degrees. Uh, but unofficial uh, degrees are uh, can be provided, and I ha I, uh, I have them right now. So I was wondering if uh, that uh, unofficial uh, degree of mine would hinder my uh, application process or not. And uh, of course, I can provide official transcripts of my degree uh, after I get admission or uh, I be chosen later. But for now, at this time, uh, I'm not sure I can provide them. Well, uh, in part, I have uh, give uh, an answer similar to that question before. But uh, specifically, when, when you have said uh, that uh, case of, of Iran, uh, in, the, in fact, we have received a, a proposal from Iran, and it was from a woman, and uh, it, uh, it sounds strange for us, but uh, now that you have made that uh, question, we can realize that this is just the case that you are uh, proposing. Because uh, she, she sent uh, her, her, her marks. Well, first of all, was uh, a document in Iranian with, an, with another translation in English. But uh, she alleged that, uh, as you say, that he has uh, Finish their studies, but he can't uh, afford the official certificate. And we didn't understand very well because uh, with the dates that uh, appeared in that document already were very well uh, from year 2021. And, and it was strange for us that uh, more than two years before, uh, after that, he, she still doesn't has the the official uh, title, but um, as you said, maybe it's a, it's a general situation in Iran, and, and we will have to study it carefully. Yeah. As, I, as I told to the other question, I encourage you to to make your proposal, 
and and we will try to to get information about that situation and and take the the correct uh, decision and of course if you have any kind of legal documents that uh, say what you have uh, said now uh, to us uh, just send by email to to the with uh, email address in order to to support the the, the, the reason I, I suppose that the Iran, uh, the government of Iran uh, would publish any kind of law or another uh, legal document that say that that do, that you can't obtain the title until you get an offer of a PhD. So if if you have any kind of documents to support it, just send to us, please. Uh, well, I can uh, I can search it online and find it, but uh, they may be in Persian language, so I'm not sure if that's uh, applicable for you. <laughs> okay, try try to get something in English, or, or yeah. of course we will try to get an, uh, uh, more information by yourselves. But any kind of documents that you can have also. Uh, it would be useful also for us, for your case and for other people from Iran that would be in the same case as you. Uh, okay, thank you so much for and in, and in any case, uh, you have to notice that all the documents have to be presented in English, even your marks or oh. your official, all of that documents will, will have to be translated. So this would yeah, be yeah. They are already translated in English, but how, uh, the problem is that uh, only my master degree uh, is not official. It's an official degree is in English. So uh, the problem is that uh, the official degree is not issued until uh, a student can find a, pos a PhD position or enroll in yeah. a PhD position yeah, either in Iran or. Yeah, but as I, as I know, I said more than the document itself, uh, you you should support the legal uh, instruction of the of the Iran authorities that uh, ordinate that uh, system. Just to, uh, uh, to okay, for sure. I, uh, that's uh, that's the document uh, we are asking you now for decide correctly uh, if we can. Uh, uh, accept your non-official certificate or or no. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It will be a kind of similar of, of the thing I told you that uh, uh, some studies in in Europe and maybe in in different countries uh, um, give you the chance to embark to a doctorate without a master. It will be a, a, a similar situation. You should accreditate that the, the laws in your country are established as, as this way. It's not just uh, Found a send a letter telling telling the things you have to. Uh, we can we need to be sure that the the country's uh, legislation or law system is in, is in that way. So, no question. I think that there is no more questions, so we will leave it here. Okay, thank you very much again for joining us. And remember that the 18th of March will be the last day to, to apply for this second call of WIT program. And in the meantime, if you have any question, of course, you can contact us by email and we will try to, to clarify them. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.